Hello, my name is Nurul Fahna Suraya, metric number 150374. My name is Nurul Afzal Bintu Umar Razi, metric number 150196. In 1946, a physical chemist named Willard Libby proposed an innovative method for dating organic materials by measuring the content of carbon-14. Known as radiocarbon dating, this method provides objective age estimates for carbon-based objects that originate from living organisms. Before we go further into the details, let us understand the basic concept of this method. Naturally, carbon has three types of isotopes. Carbon-12, which is the most abundant, Carbon-13 and Carbon-14 Carbon-12 and Carbon-13 are stable isotopes. Carbon-14, however, is radioactive. Researchers from the field of physics have discovered that radioactive molecules are unstable and they need to undergo decay to attain a stable structure at a specific rate which is directly determined by the atomic number and the mass of decaying atom. Based on this constant of the radioisotope of carbon, which is carbon-14, the age of the organic material is assessed. Now, let's get to the dating case. How does this thing work? What is the science behind it? Okay, so, in the biosphere, carbon-14 is created by the collision of neutrons acted by the cosmic ray. And these neutrons collide with a nitrogen atoms. The isotope of carbon thus produced is radioactive and will undergo decay at a constant rate. Now, can you recall about this decaying thing? Can, right? Of course, if you're not sleeping in your class. Hopefully. So now, when an organism is alive, they're constantly taking in more carbon through respiration and in the food, and nutrients they eat and absorb along with normal carbon 12 yes my friend there's carbon 14 in your soup wait a minute who are you <coughs> now let's imagine another scenario for a clearer view of this method let's say an organism is dead um, their carbon intake is stopped so the amount of carbon-12 in the body stays the same. At the same time, the number of carbon-14 atoms in its body starts to decrease over the times as the isotope decays at an exponential rate to form the stable nitrogen-14. Thus, by comparing the relative quantity of carbon-12 and carbon-14 in an organic matter as cavated, scientists can predict the age of the object. Now, another question arises. How do we count and compare the number of different carbon isotopes in a sample? No worries because, come on, it's already 21st century. Magic conch shell? You mean like this? We have a specific tool to do this work, which is the mass spectrometer. A mass spectrometer is a machine that counts relative atomic mass. This means it calculates the proportion of different isotopes in a sample. How about the limitation to this method? Does this method is valid for a very 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 old sample? Let's say sample that aged 1000 years? To answer this question, we can relate to half-life of a radioactive. Does that ring a bell? So, while carbon-14 decays very slowly, after about 10 half-lives or about 55,000 years, the amount of carbon-14 in a sample is too small to be counted. So anything older than 55,000 years need a different dating method such as potassium argon or uranium lead dating. Now, let me test your understanding to see if you're actually paying attention to what we have discussed before. Hey, blink twice if you're in danger. Whoa, guy. If Radiocarbon dating is valid for sample aged less than 55,000 years. Does that mean we can radiocarbon date everything? Is radiocarbon dating possible for things like stone, metal, and pottery? Yes or no? Yes or no? Yes or no? Time's up. The answer is... It kind of depends. Can 
the carbon date anything that was once alive. Therefore, we date human and animal bones, preserved wood, charcoals, as well as other parts of plants such as seeds or even insects. Objects made from these products can also be dated, for example, our clothing. Therefore, things like stone, metal and pottery usually cannot be directly dated by this method unless there is some organic material embedded or left as a residue.